Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. And we've got fucking Lou back. <laughs> we had a reprieve last week, and st we've just lost Steve. We go live, and Steve disappears. He freezes <laughs> in an unfathomable position. <laughs> oh, no, he's back. Oh, he's back. There he is. Did you say anything then, Steve? I'm back. We, we, we are joining in the Lou insults. Uh, no, but I just opened Steam, and it's killed everything ah, that's that's it then um so yes hello and welcome to the show we are uh, four guys from the northwest of uh, northwest north north of england uh, who talk about games game development gaming news etc etc uh, essentially it's just bollocks we talk for a couple of hours before we start off on the computer stuff can i just uh, say did everyone hear about the um i know this is political and it's nothing to do with the election in the uk by the way uh, did you hear about been an election did you hear Sorry. about what happened to the, um, is it the... Cyborg? It was, um, the military advisor, basically, of Kim Jong-un. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was executed by the aircraft gun. Yeah. If I, <laughs> ever become, if, if I ever get, like, a terminal illness and euthanasia becomes legal in the UK, that's how I want to go. <laughs> and the aircraft <laughs> gun. Was he, was he flying? <laughs> no, he was, he was basically, I think he was obliterated was the word that they use in the news. He basically... Put in front of an a aircraft gun with a crowd of people watching, Why? and they shot him till he was no longer there. Because he fell asleep during a parade. Yeah. This guy was eighty-two year old. Because he fell asleep during a parade. There's yeah. got to be some bollocks in there somewhere. There's you see, it's North Korea it doesn't sound like bollocks to me. Point us back in the game, and if they could just, if they could just play StarCraft 2, it'd be No, fine. putting us back in the game, I was just going to say, it's completely impossible to shoot someone who's standing on the ground with an aircraft gun. You can't do that in any game ever. <laughs> it doesn't point down in Yeah, it, you can only, it's like that, and it's like, no, surely, surely you I think, can point at the ground. Do you think the trick jumped him into the air, like put him in a jeep and sent him off a bridge? <laughs> That's what I mean, he was, he was on a balcony or something, wasn't he? Or up in, up in the mountains. <laughs> Put him in a hot air balloon and just a flagpole or something. But yes, um, you know, I'm, I'm just on the serious note. What the fuck? What the, what, is it? Why did? Is that just because he chose to? He just had that in his mind that day. He thought, oh, I'll tell you what, that's that anti-aircraft gun there isn't being used today. Let's let's point it at someone. It was uh, there. Apparently, he wanted to make an example because the crowd that was stood round were all members of his cabinet. So it was yeah. kind of like, look, this is what happens. Apparently he's got rid of a lot of his, um, a, a lot of the, um, the, the, the coffin bearers for his father. Most yeah, of them have been executed or gone missing or something. I'd hoped it was something really, really funny, like he thought the shells were going out of date, so he had to use one <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, we're, we're about Maybe to reach the half-life of this nuclear, uh, <laughs> nuclear device, so let's, uh, let's expend Maybe it quickly. it's kind of like an extension of uh, that show, like, will it blend? But for new, uh, like, for anti aircraft guns, it's like, will it blow up? <laughs> It's like he's, he's, he's it, tried a cow, it, he's tried a shit. <laughs> now he's trying a human. Well. Yes. <laughs> that was a good introduction. I, 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 I hadn't heard of that. I should really look at the actual news instead of just gaming news, shouldn't I? Um, hello to everyone in chat, by the way. Hello to uh, to Tristan, Mythalaw, etc., etc. Um, right, so we might as well move on straight away to what we have played this week. Oh, dear. Well, yeah, again, Lou, Lou hasn't played anything because he's, he's apparently got a life th these days. And um, me and Steve had a bit of a, a game of uh, Grand Theft Auto Online. Yeah? It didn't look like Steve did. I don't know, <laughs> Steve, Steve's, Steve's, Steve's <laughs> just... very confused about this. I think he's lost us. Yeah. There he is. He's oh, he's, he's about ten minutes behind us. Close Steam, man. Honestly, you... you... No, no, I'm still here. <laughs> Oh, well. Steve is close. Uh, yeah, you are. You're definitely 10 seconds behind us. You, something's happened. Right, anyway. So, me, me and Steve played a bit of GTA V. Um, we played on Sunday or Saturday or Friday. One of the days this weekend. And um, Saturday. I... I... <laughs> I don't know what to think of it. I don't know if I like it or not. I don't know if it's if it's got enough substance. You know, I mean, the the the, the single player game is amazing. It, you know, when I played it on the three hundred and sixty, I loved it. Uh, the the story, the arc, the, all the mechanics, all the 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 stuff that you can do in the city, etc. That's all brilliant. You know, it's a great evolution of the GTA um, franchise. But the online stuff, it is. Uh, there's been a bit of a joke going around on Twitter that it's GTA loading screen. 
And it very, very much is GTA loaded screen. Now, it's not the fact that it takes ages to load the game up. I can deal with that. Or even takes ages when you go and do, like, a particular activity. But every time you do any kind of activity, like you go into a death match or you, you go into a, a, a race or a parachute or, you know, all of the stuff you can do in the single player, you can you can compete against people in the uh, in multiplayer. Um, it takes ages to load. Now, Steve's PC was loading much quicker than mine, and I've got a more powerful PC than his, and he was saying it was something to do with uh, something to do with him optimising it greatly. I reckon it was because he kept getting disconnected from the bloody session, because uh, that was another thing. Loads of bugs. No, Constant no, no, issues. No. Right, Chris. Chris has went out and spent a lot of money on a lot of components, threw them together, and is surprised that they don't work as well as my bespoke built optimised rig. Oh, right, so the mine isn't a, a bespoke built rig. It's. No, it's, it's bespoke break. built, but in, in your own words, I got them, I plugged everything in, it didn't change anything in the BIOS no, I didn't. and started playing games. I didn't, so you're right. I will say that mine is more optimised than yours. As, as of today. Did you disable though, Smart Stay? Is that what you did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does that, you don't even get the option for Smart in biases anymore, I don't think. Or not, they're not even BIOSes anymore, they're UFEs now. I don't even know what UFE stands for. Un upside down enterprise universe fuck interface. Funny. Funny, Funny. Funny interface. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's it's the new evolution of BIOSes, and it's it's a lot more uh, complicated. You know, you can do a lot more stuff in it now. You can yeah, install you can drivers, and yeah, you can use your mouse. It's in 1080p as well. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Unified is... extensible firmware interface. Yeah. So, and also, if you init right, this is one thing that's pissed me off, and I think this <coughs> might be because I've got the, uh, this mechanical keyboard that you guys keep complaining about. And um, there's a switch on the back of my keyboard that allows me to turn it to BIOS mode. Um, <laughs> allows you to turn it to quiet mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> turns all the all the keys off. No. Um. When you when you're in Windows <coughs> 8 and you've got your UEFI BIOS, if you enable legacy or disable legacy USB support or something like that, which I did to try and rectify my camera issues that I was having, you can't press delete or F2 to get into your UEFI when you boot up. So you have to boot into the UEFI from Windows 8, which you can do by going to um, the troubleshoot in advanced startup type options, which I've, I've kind of got used to now. So you basically boot, reboot into... Uh, advanced startup mode and then you select a UEFI to boot into that and then you can get into it but it's still it's a little bit like I've spent what 15 <clears> years <throat> pressing delete constantly when my computer boots up to get into to get into the BIOS and it's totally changed now. Sam this is why you don't have a PC isn't it? Yeah. This it's, is precisely him, right here in a nutshell. <clears throat> all this crap. <laughs> well no this is this is this also leads on to game the gamers in general doesn't it because you you went us gamers we're not just like us PC gamers, rather, we're not just PC gamers; we're PC users, and that's the the. the we want customization. We want to be able to modify everything, and that brings up a, a valid point about all of these games that are coming out these days that people are complaining about that you can't customize. You don't have a console option, you know, like yeah, like the cons and things like that. Now, I was that that leads me on to a game I'm playing at the moment called Unepic. Um, it's a two D indie game. So it's developed by one Spanish dude, um, and, it, and he's, he's got some good voice actors in it and things like that. It's thoroughly enjoying it. I'm nearly at the end now. Uh, I've been playing it at least a couple of hours every night, maybe. Or a couple of nights I've had off. Um, but I just got on to, like, it must be the, like the second last section of the game, and I'm in, like, these hall areas, and there's loads of armoured guards running around, and I went into it the first time, and I got killed instantly when I went in a room because it was just full of... I just got raped, basically. And then I figured out that if I used a, a, a unique weapon that I had, a, some kind of bow called Melthor or something like that, um, it fired corrosive arrows and it corroded the armor on these dudes. So I was dead chuffed and I was like, oh God, I can keep them away from me and I can I can kill them all. I went about three three screens into this uh, halls area, this, this second to last area of the game. And there's these jester enemies if they I've never never encountered them before this moment if they cast whatever magic they use on you whatever weapon you have turns into a fucking toy hammer right <laughs> and, and and you start hitting people and it goes <laughs> and it's like it's just like I'd lost my bow I don't know why I decided it was a good idea to then sell that toy hammer to a merchant because I was like well pissed off then I read something on the internet saying you can actually get the weapon back if you 
take it to a vendor somewhere in the world, which I had encountered before, but I didn't it didn't register it's such a big game. And I was well pissed off, and I was like, I actually spent about an hour last night trying to figure out how to revert my save back to an old save because I made the you mistake. You were the ultimate save scummer. The fact that you're probably oh. using recovery tools to save scum. I was. I was. I got to a point. I, down, I downloaded Recover. I downloaded this for like this. Other, it's another thing. I down. I, I started. I was trying to see if um, Windows Seven has a file uh, version history. Windows Eight doesn't have it on by default fault you have to turn file history on and i hadn't turned it on so i i can't reload my save the, can the, you buy it back off the merchant you sold it to no 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 i sold the toy hammer um i know when you sell something to a merchant it's gone it's not right. like it's not that kind of game you don't you return it, they buy don't. another bow and arrow no because the bow was a unique item that you can only get out of a chest that was in a hidden area and i got it and i kind of just i didn't really use it much but then i i, I found out that it happened to be really good in this area by accident and i was so miffed because i was like I, I went through about three screens killing these guards dead quickly and i was like this is amazing i'm gonna get through this area dead quick and then it gets turned into a bloody toy hammer i haven't actually been hit by any of the jester's attacks since then and if you and um if you disable or you unequip all your weapons, it doesn't matter anyway. They can't. They don't change your weapons into anything because you haven't got anything equipped. And I just, oh, so annoying. I played it for eighteen hours, and this one unique weapon that's gonna was going to get me through that whole area dead quickly. I now have to use a, a normal bow and arrow, and it, it takes like less than a quarter of the health up, and there's no like um, damage over time stuff with it because the corrosion would damage it over. T it's like I just. I, to me, it was a bad design choice in the game. <coughs> I, well, there was what, two wait, things. To, to not make like it clear that... Playing it properly. Well, no, there was, there was three things, actually, that happened, right? So this thing happened. It turned it into a toy hammer. At that point, I could have reloaded a save. For some weird reason, I don't know why, I decided to... to um, teleport to a merchant, sell my hammer to a merchant, teleport to the save area, save the game. Like they that were the next. Like, that sounds masochistic as hell. That was the. They were the next two things that I did. Now, when I was looking up on the internet, is there any way around this? This guy's put it. This Spanish guy's put in so much cheat protection to this game. There's no way to cheat, and I don't cheat generally in games unless, apart from the saves coming, unless uh, unless something really annoying like that happens, and it's like that. That is. That's a annoying game breaking bug to me. It was like I had this unique item that was amazing. I could have went off and got all these divine favors or whatever i needed to do to get the you know to, to i could have spent an hour trying to get the weapon back it probably would have saved me time in the long run because it's so hard to get through this area without that bow anyway i am um, i have to say whenever i was playing a game if that ever happened to me my first my first thought would have been there must be a way to reverse this spell same here yeah. Yeah. Right. If it's, especially that. if it's such an important weapon like if you if you've got something like the umbra sword from oblivion and then someone like turned it into like say Shea Goro turned it into a fish or something, I'd have gone, there must be a way to reverse this and get it back to normal. I, I, I it's know. such a, an important part of the game that like, how would it not be reversible? I just, I just thought, right, there were so many little, there's, at the game's really good in general, there's not, I haven't really encountered any bugs, but there's so many little things, like little um, features of the game, let's say, that aren't standard, you know, in standard RPGs, that it just made me think, I don't, I don't know why my brain wasn't engaged at that point, and it's my own fault, it really is my own fault, I'm not blaming the game developer, however... I think it's a bad, I still think it's a really bad kind of design choice. There's so many people online that have done that and then tried to revert a save, but it's had an auto save after they've done it, you know, because it auto saves at kind of random points. There's not really any defined place that it saves. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I'm loving the game, but I've, I actually went back to it after about an hour of trying to recover it and, and played for, it took me, I'd say about 30 minutes to get through two rooms instead of, instead of like two minutes a room you know it's that that much you of get a more difference gameplay out of it. Uh, i don't need it though <laughs> no yeah okay no but the thing is i'll be playing it for 18 hours already i've got my fill of the game you know i'm happy with it i want to complete it now i've got i'm two bosses from the end i think and oh just you've got gaming blue balls now have you chris gaming what <laughs> gaming blue <laughs> balls what is that is that in reference to my anger that's a sexual term which means you need to come oh right okay <laughs> Never heard that before. You Never came across that. Not to with this <clears throat> can we go back to Grand Theft Auto? Because we kind yes, of sorry. really can't lead our way away from Grand Theft Auto. So I, my only experience of playing Grand Theft Auto multiplayer was Multi Theft Auto on, like, on the PC, our LAN. Mm -hmm. 
And that was that was a laugh because it was so hacky and buggy yeah, and broken yeah. and, and like clearly not meant to be a proper game. But there was still loads to do in that, and it was really fun. There is that is, does that not is it taking itself too seriously? Is that the problem with it? It is very very serious. It's not. It doesn't to me feel like much fun. It feels like I'm chasing money, and that's what the point is. Is that everything is about making money so you can upgrade your car, so you can buy. Um, new weapons, better weapons, and just basically, it's kind of like a grind. You know, like in um, COD, where you you grind to the next level. In, in Call of Duty, you basically you have different. Uh, every level, you get a certain um, unlock of some sort. Although you uh, you're, you're grinding for money, so you can go and do loads of races, get better at racing as a as a racing skill. But really, that doesn't really achieve much apart from you can win more races. But you can win races anyway, because I mean, Steve and I were playing. Um, some it depends who comes in the session with you, you know. I, I wouldn't like to play races anyway. I think races is the most yeah, important part. Of Grand I, I, doesn't just there is some driving skill for the races, does it? it? Like when you start doing heists and stuff, it makes you a better getaway driver. Yeah. When, you, when there yeah. Um, there are certain races as well that are like combat races in it, aren't there? There's certain races where you can do a bit like um, a bit like with like Mario Kart, where you pick up. Rockets and stuff, I think. It's quite good fun. Can I just say, on the record, fuck the jet races. Absolutely <laughs> fuck them in the arse. There is just no... It's just boring. Absolutely pointless. But the aer the aeroplane races. I don't know. mind some of the aeroplane races. I mean, there was one we got in a jumbo jet, or the, you know, the... Um, passenger jets. There was one I played. You're in a passenger jet, and it was just people just crashing into, uh, into sides of of uh, mountains because they couldn't control the jet properly. But the the jets themselves, you know the um, you know the, the combat jets. It just mm. especially ones with where you've got the weapons enabled. Just it's just explosion after explosion because everyone's got homing missiles and it's yeah. it's pointless. It just is. You can't evade the homing missiles. I played a couple of rounds. Yeah. Of that, uh, the, the sort of dogfight one. And you can't evade the homing missile. I actually did really well in that one. For some reason, people just couldn't seem to figure out how to evade homing missiles, and I did. This was in one session, ages ago. And I was like, yeah, I'm awesome at one thing in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not mean? too bad at the, the races, the, the ground races with the cars. Um, I, and, in fact, if, uh, if there's a, a dirt bike race, I'm quite good at them as well. But most of the time, I get my ass handed to me. I really hate firing from a vehicle in Grand Theft Auto. Well, that's that, so clunky. Oh, it's and terrible. Annoying. It, it was it was clunky on the 360 in my eyes, um, and in fact, it's clunky with a pad. It's but I really worse. like it on a keyboard. I, I don't drive with the keyboard. I, I assume it will be quite good on the keyboard. But I play with a pad when I'm in a vehicle, and it's e somehow even worse on PC than it was on the Xbox. You know kind of firing you know from a car. Do you know what confused me about that is there's a game series that you may have heard of called True Crime. There was a game called True Crime yeah. Streets of LA, True Crime Streets of New York, and then the sequel was going to be True Crime Streets of, uh, I think, if not Hong Kong, then a major Chinese city. And that became the game Sleeping Dogs because that developer folded in on itself. That game was a bit, was more dull than Grand Theft Auto. Like the city wasn't as interesting, but it had really good shooting from the car system. Like, you could drive the car, the car, you start to steer it and stuff, but you could actually aim properly, whereas in that, you have to press the fire button, and then it just starts firing as you're aiming. You don't get to just aim and then fire. Mm. It's a really crap way of doing it. It's yeah. like, it's one of the really early missions in the one-player game as well, where you have to do it, where you've got to chase that big boat. And I yeah. failed that mission many times over. I was like, this is a really shit way to start I, the game. I, I think they actually knew that the, it was going to be so difficult, because the, the, the enemies take one hit to kill. On that boat, I think they did that deliberately mm. because I realised, hang on a sec, it's so hard to bloody hit these people. We're going to have to make it as easy as possible while still introducing the mechanic of firing from a vehicle. They could have figured it out that it, you could have had some way of being able to retain your control of the vehicle, even if you had to stop accelerating, for example, like to enable you to actually aim and then decide when to shoot rather than just be shooting as a default, unless you stop holding the button down. And when you stop holding the button down, you stop aiming. I, I've, it was crappy in Grand Theft Auto 4, and it's crappy in Grand Theft Auto 5 as well. That isn't that is how it works in Grand Theft Auto. Even well on PC anyway, you, you hold down the aim button, and then you you can you can accelerate, hold down the aim button, and then fire. Yeah, but you've, there's too many controls when you're doing that because you can try to control the car and the I, aim I of the agree. weapon you're, and aim, they press the aim button and like, the fire button. You like there's that like, basically yeah, to control like it. And... 
So you can do it, but it's still really hard because you're pressing I many, it, many I controls. I, 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 I can do it. I can do it in the car, but I prefer the fidelity of the mouse when I'm driving and shooting. Yeah, if I'm playing a race... There's some type of handicap, is not there, to driving around in a vehicle at high speed trying to kill people. <laughs> well, there is yeah, the I, fact I, that you're driving around in a vehicle at high speed. Surely that's enough. But in the old <laughs> games, you had you had a really simple drive-by mechanic, which actually worked quite well. It was just yeah, you, you, looked, you press look to the right, fire out your window. It was yeah, a lot I'd more prefer- restricted, but it was easy to, to maintain. You drive in at the same time, I thought. I don't know. It's not, it's kind of a small point in the grand scheme of the game, really. But anyway. Yeah, I I said I, I much prefer it because you can... One, um, the snap isn't on when you're using your, uh, using your mouse and keyboard. You can uh, turn that off anywhere for the joypad as well. Can you turn it off for the joypad entirely so it doesn't z- snap back to... But I quite like that, yeah. that it snaps back to the... Jo- when I'm on the joypad because I don't want to have to move it back and forth. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a real weird kind of catch-22 scenario, I think. But I like to, I like the, the, the control with... In fact, I like the shooting with the mouse as well. I much prefer it. And I actually... I know you said you didn't like it, Steve, but I really like the first person in it. Yeah, I the like it as well. The only problem I have with the first person is I do like having the third person when you're hugging a wall in, enabled because <clears throat> I don't like the fact that I can't really see where I am and if I'm actually hugging up, hugging a wall properly when I'm looking around a wall. Um, and I don't like coming off ladders and coming out of, you know, coming off the wall once you've been hugging it because it feels like <clears throat> you're kind of, I think Lou kind of said this before, it feels like you're kind of half looking one way and... Yeah, your body's facing yeah. another way and your head's not. But I'll tell you what as well, the ladders you mentioned there, the amount of times I fell down that bloody tower while scoping out the... Um, the jewelry heist mission, mm. because he just doesn't grab the. the PC yet. Well, well you've, you have played that mission, though. it's the first heist mission. But basically, you've got to climb up to a tower and take pictures at the top of the jewelry store, and they've got to climb up some ladders in some like refurbished building. Ask him falling down the shaft. I didn't have any trouble with that. <laughs> I d- you d- I you wouldn't I grab did. the ladder. I mean, I'm expecting on games when you walk near a ladder that you want to go down, and he'll, he'll grab the ladder. But I just walked <laughs> off the edge and fell into the. Next room. No, I haven't had a problem with that. I, I, I'm very conscious of that whenever I walk towards a ladder and I'm going down. I'm very conscious of the fact that it might not grab the ladder, but GTA seems okay for me for that. Yeah. Um, my experience of the online part, it was... I think it's meant for more people. Yes. I think um, me just playing with you, um, the potential was there, but it was a few game modes that just didn't work with two people for a start. Mm. There's a few game modes that were very difficult with two people. Um, but I don't know. I can, I can see it being really fun if we get a few more people involved. I agree, and I think we need at least four people to make it at least a decent bit of fun. Mm. I mean, there's, there's a lot of... Um, I, played a, I played a mode... It, there's a lot of waiting around in lobbies as well, four people, yeah. and that's annoying. And once you've waited in the lobby, then it takes a time for it to load the, lo- the game, and then it takes more time to load the actual lobby, that you, the, the game mode that you're going into. And it takes time to load the screen at the end. It's just constant loading. It's just a bit annoying. It does teleport you around the map, though, doesn't it? And it, it, yeah, it, normally it does, the game yeah. gets around that by streaming the map. But obviously, if you're teleporting around the map to your different starting locations, but you're loading, you you're load. loading out of the main kind of lobby area. The main lobby area of the game is is <coughs> just the general. Everyone's on the map together, shooting each other. When you go into a session, you're loading into a session which other people don't have access to and an don't instance. see you. Yeah, an yeah. instance essentially. And it feels a bit weird to me. It doesn't feel like I'm still online. It it should. I, I don't know. I, I I think it'd be better if. I think it'd be more dynamic and give a bit more immersive gameplay if other people could interrupt your game. If you know what I mean. I don't know if it'd work though. I mean, I, I you don't just know. end up screaming bloody murder at them though when they stepped but in maybe, front of you trying to drive away. There's also maybe, there's also not. Go on, sorry. I was going to say maybe like a Destiny style approach where you're basically playing a single player mode and multiplayer instances can happen within it so other crews can come into your game and at certain points and stuff you know that kind of the way Fable works I don't know I think isn't Fable like people in your game you can't interact with them they've got the same kind of thing in um, I'm thinking like you you they like accepted want to join your game or you join their game. In Destiny, I haven't played Destiny, but I think one of the big things it touts, I think um, the Division or the Divide or whatever it's called does this as well, is that you play a single player game or you play like a small instance game with a few of your friends and occasionally will matchmake you in the game with other people who are in the same location. So they'll come into your game 
And you'll interact um, with them for a bit. Dead Island does that as well. You can play the single player and open it up for people to join your game. I didn't like the mechanic particularly. It wasn't great. But there's also um, uh, there's games like... Um, Killzone again. I keep bringing that up because I think I still think the multiplayer in Killzone is a brilliant. Killzone Two specifically uh, was um, a brilliant way of working. I like the fact that you could you could kind of all you've all melded into different game modes and stuff, and and everyone could just join us and leave as they needed to. Uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne and all those games do that as well. Where actually it's quite it's done in a way that could actually be really really annoying if you just want to play one player because if you're playing online and you're in a certain, if you've got certain items or certain conditions like for online play, quits or co-op, then other people can invade your game and attack you as you're playing, which can be good fun, but it can also be mind-meltingly like annoying as well. I tend to find as well that when you're in the, the main map area, although I do enjoy the main map area, it's almost a bit pointless. It's as if people are just running around shooting everybody and there's not really much point to it. You know, because when you when you're actually doing any activity, apart from sticking up sh uh, sticking up shops, I like that. I like the fact that you can run <coughs> into a shop as a as a team, point your gun at the clerk, and and hold down your your talk button and start screaming at the the clerk, and he'll he'll put money in the bag quicker if yeah. you scream at him more and stuff. That I like that. I like that. I wish more of the game was like that. Well, presumably you you mm. both are not at the right level to play heist mode. Yeah, yeah. I have to be probably, level twelve or above. I'm yeah. level fifteen now, so you're level eight now. So um, because that looks like a very so. nice structured British version of the game. Yes and no. I've joined a few heist missions because you can join them when you get to. Well, you can join them anyway. I think at any level. I joined a few uh, just to see what they were like because other people invite you. Con you're getting constant stream of invites. It's like in the you know, like in GTA Four. Yeah, four where um, Nico was Cousin, just, oh, yeah. to go bowling. It's like that online though, but it's just constant, and you can turn the frequency down or up. But it's still like, like if you change the frequency to every five minutes, every five minutes you'll just get spammed with everything. It's like you know, it's like getting like turning your your email email on and it all coming in at once. You know, um, one massively frustrating thing about the game we played was when we both got sniped by that guy and couldn't catch him. Well, there's I always like that, a sniper. Though. There's always some dickhead a million miles away yeah. with a sniper rifle. You know what? I've done that. I did that last <gasps> night. I did that last night. I jumped on top of a building and I was just there was this one guy running around and I, I, I just decided I'm going to shoot him just for fun. Got a sniper rifle out, sh shot him in the head, dead straight away, and then he spawned Ooh. again like a few meters away and he, he started running in exactly the same place that he was a second ago. Like I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I just kept doing it. And I was I like. <laughs> Me and you had spent ages trying to find each other so we could have an impromptu race. Yeah, yeah. If we just got lined up, just revving up. Oh, and that died. one, sorry. Yeah, yeah. that was annoying, Then Chris that died. One. And then I chased this guy on foot and he ran into um, to the air hangar over in um, Sandy Shores and took the only aircraft and flew off. Oh... And yeah, they went to the city. And then but, by the but the good thing the is, city, is you couldn't, you couldn't, you can't do it yet because you haven't opened it up. But when you get to a certain level, um, Lest is it Lester? The guy in that, yeah. Lester yeah. Uh, gives you the option to put bounties on people's heads, so you can basically say you can choose a That's player and you can say, right, I want to give uh, whoever ten grand to kill this guy, and you can keep doing that if you really want, and they'll probably like end up that. leaving. It, there's a lot of that kind of thing in there. And I love the main map mode, but I think the sessions, the instances, which is a lot of a lot hell of a lot of that. That's where you make most of the money, and that's where you make most of the gameplay. I think that mode. I know they probably had to do it that way, but it just feels, it feels hacked on. It feels tacked. You know, I think the 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 interaction in the main environment is what would have made that better to me personally. It's like um, Red Dead Redemption when you play that online. In my experience of that, I think there's there is sessions in that, but it's it's quite quick at loading them. And if I remember right, you can go into like you know a gulch and do a, a and do a mission with a, a, a posse of people. <laughs> Yeah, that was that, that that was actually done live. I don't think you had to go into a lobby. You just had to. You just said you were going to join it, or you didn't, didn't you? Basically. Okay, well, maybe. But if that was the case, then I that, can't remember. They should have done that. They should have done that with GTA Five. But there was nowhere near as much to do in that game. There was you could literally either like ride around and shoot each other, or go and do missions, and that was there was nothing else to do. In Red yeah, Dead. it was good fun. But Je it was Je more simple. Jedi in chat just said, "I try not to blow up people's cars. It costs too much, and it adds up." Now you can get insurance on your car. So if you get a car and it's yours, and you've got a garage, and you, you take it to a Los Santos Customs place, you 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 can get insurance, and you can get a tracker on it. If you get insurance, then that means anybody who blows your car up has to pay a premium on that car. 
and then if you get a tracker that means that you can ring up the insurance company so once you if your car gets blown up you can ring the insurance company up and it will basically you, if you blow it up you have to pay the premium and you it, it respawns at the insurance broker's depot and if you uh, if someone else blows up they play the premium and you can still call your insurance and get the car so your car if you've if you've spent ages and ages and loads of money like upgrading your car you can always get it back and you don't have to keep getting the insurance out it's it's a one-off payment but then you just <coughs> pay the premium there was one thing they added into the online play that's to do with the cars that i actually thought they didn't have it in the one player game and it actually annoyed the shit out of me is the fact that if you're driving a car that's not registered to you the police will start coming after you if they see you yeah. in it yes and the, yeah. i didn't i really didn't like that what? because i'm like look it's grand theft auto like i want to be yeah. able to walk up to a fucking lamborghini and nick it but no, like, but no, come on yeah no that's right that's fine but you can still lose the police but they will chase you again if they see you again but there isn't there doesn't seem to be that many police around in the main game there aren't so, that many but there was enough that it, it was kind of annoying I, that really, I was just like driving down the road and then they randomly uh, start coming after me I, like, I, oh, come I on. prefer that I prefer uh, that I, from I the single like player it. because that's more know. realistic and, and again it's more about immersion to me and I, you know what the, I, I, it keeps going back to the main map is brilliant the, the the sessions need work or the, the the next iteration of this gt online needs a bit more thought into that area i think the, the, the uh, lobbies and everything like that i would agree they really bring it to a grinding halt mm. don't they when you play it i mean you're having to have fun it's just like right we'll wait for because a lot of the gate a lot of the missions as well require a minimum number of people so yeah. if you've got a, if you two of you you go i will do this mission it needs four people you send all the invites out because everyone's getting invites left right and the center you sat there and waited for <clears> people to join, and then they join and they leave because their mates aren't in it or whatever. Oh, they just, just sometimes yeah. it takes forever just to get a simple little mission going. Yeah, and sometimes you're just waiting around, and it's like I've not actually got anything achieving. What you can do though, you can go to quick jobs, and then you can instantly get in a job of that type. Now, you may not be the one you want to do, but it's one that's similar, you know. Mm. Uh, and that I, I quite like that. That I prefer doing that than. Right, as you progress through this multiplayer game, you get missions from the main characters in the in the single player game. So you get Lester missions, you get Trevor missions, you get, I imagine, probably Michael and Franklin potentially, maybe at some point. I don't know, I haven't got that far yet. Devin um, Weston got in touch with me. I got, I got yeah, up Devin. to about 30 odd in the in my PlayStation. So I'm, 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 a, I'm about level 15, so I've only played it for maybe a week, if that. And uh, yeah, I've, I've got a few open now but if you want to do those that's the problem you have to find people to do them and, and a lot of the time these people have already done them they don't want to do them again you know mm -hmm. uh, and i don't know if there's any benefit to advancing the story on your side of things i don't know no i don't know if there is an end game to it or either really but the heists i'm looking forward to doing the heists I'm looking forward to getting onto that with with friends. I've played it with a few randomers, and the problem with I mean, I played one that was um, you had to go into a, a a lab and basically kill a load of guards stealthily without anyone seeing you and setting the alarms off, and then get to a, a van, hack a plant panel. So the hacking, the little hacking things are cool in in it as well. Um, hack a panel and then kind of get the van out before anyone sees you or before the police come, and. Um, they're quite immersive the heists are quite immersive and quite cool but again you have to get the right group of people there was one guy who just kept setting the alarm off just constantly <laughs> and it's like we did it about 20 times and i, I was <laughs> I was I was pressing I was I was the only one talking as well on my mic and I wasn't being like one of them oh we should do it this way we should do that I was just like good shot you know that kind of thing because I didn't really want to be stopping typing every five seconds there's not many people that communicate on it as well I thought this day and age people would be you know I oh, know they only communicate so what, to tell you what how, how much sex I've had with your mother yeah, well I haven't actually experienced that yet but there's a few times I've been shot and then someone will just go Whoa! and that's it and the only thing i heard from anyone other than chris was people singing just randomly making like humming or whistling or making crazy weird noises oh do you know what i i heard and I, I couldn't figure out how to silence people on the this is on the playstation 3 version of the online when it first came out is people who were playing the game and had music on in the room that they were playing the game on so you could hear their shitty like rap music or whatever the fuck it was coming through into your online game and it's like in what world do you think anyone else wants to hear that shit, mate? Like turn the, it same, off? the same world that the scrubbers on the bus play stuff through the bloody mobile oh, phone. Yeah. That, I, yeah. 
Am so, I? In fact, some of them just sit there listening to it at the back of the bus. Like, I don't go on a bus anymore, by the way, but I just remember it. <laughs> when was the last time you were on a bus? They had ah, mobile phones the last time you went on a bus. <laughs> Fuck last off. Time I'm on a bus. Oh, they had bus on the show. I used to have to get to the <laughs> bus. Did they have powered vehicles the last time you were on a bus? <laughs> so fucking hell. Come on. I used to have to go to the bus, sta the train station, so I got the bus there. Right. <clears throat> so there. Right. Um,. So we move on from GTA 5, or is there anything else you want to talk about with it? I mean, I could talk about it all night. I'm quite. I, I'm going uh, to keep playing it. Put it that way. I'm. I'm going to reserve my final judgment until I've played it with a with a larger group of people because I think that we've only just scratched the surface of. We totally have on. I, I mean, I've played more than you, yeah. and I. I've literally there's so much that opens up every new level you get there's a new wave of things that open up that you can do and new items you can purchase and i mean i haven't even got like the first level of everything on my car yet that i can buy you have to unlock st loads of stuff it does require a little bit of, of grinding just to get to a level where you just got basic equipment that you need like you need to grind enough to at least get the ak-47 and at least get a, a, a some sort of sniper <laughs> rifle because well, you start out with nothing, you can you can have like a pistol. Mm. And a, well, because and I pre-ordered it, I got like eight hundred and fifty <laughs> million or something in my bank. Eight hundred fifty thousand, oh right? Uh, we we, yeah. do, we did about three races, and and fair enough, Steve Steve won a few of them, and you get about ten grand a race depending on who what you're playing and who you're playing with. Uh, I'd I'd won quite a lot, and when I was playing with Steve, I think we were kind of even, weren't we? While, yeah. while we were playing that. Um, but I was like, "There's no way that you've you've won that many." And then and then it dawned on Steve that he pre-ordered, and, and I was like, "Oh right, that's all right." And I let you off. Yeah. I was gutted though. I was like, I was I went all quiet, and I was like, "The fuck, the fuck is he doing? How did he get? Was he cheating? What the fuck's wrong with him?" <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, next game. Let's move on. Um, well, I've got one to talk about, and I think Lou's played it as well. Yep. Uh, a game called Titan Souls, which I didn't know until I actually loaded it up and started playing it. I think it's by the same guys who did Hotline Miami. Uh, same, the same dev logo came up. I can't remember. What uh, they're Devolver, uh, no, no, they're, they're, they're publisher. publisher. Devolver, yeah. the publisher. What about Abstraction Games as well? Aren't they the ones that made it? Uh, I, I could be totally so. wrong about that. The developer so, I've got down here is Acid Nerve. Yeah, Acid Nerve. Oh, fair enough. Acid fair enough. Nerve, then. Yeah. It's the same publisher. Definitely. This is different for the console. Yeah. Maybe it's a very different game from. Miami, but uh, for those of you that haven't that don't know, it's uh, it's a top-down view in the in the in the vein of the old Zelda games. Um, basically, a, a, a series of boss fights that you go to. There's there's exploration in it, but the exploration, a bit like Shadow of the Colossus, is only to get you to the next boss fight. I'd liken it to a cross between a Link to the Past and Shadow of the Colossus, in that you just you go around a, a big world and then find a boss and then kill it. But there's not now, much the unique, to do in between the bosses, though. Not that I've found. There's a couple of the world again, the, is all the slightly puzzly sometimes, aren't they? Like there's yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah, getting to the boss itself and finding it is half of the the challenge. There was one bit in a forest, for example, near the beginning, when it had that uh, the Lost Woods thing from Zelda, where you go you go into like a multiple path area that's got four exits. You go to the left and you come back out that way. So you go up and it's the right way, and you've got to do a process of elimination to find where you've got to go. Which I don't mind, it only took a few they've, minutes. They've done that in quite a few Zeldas. They, were, they did it on the Game Boy Zelda as well, the very last yeah. bloody puzzle. You had to up, up, left, left, right, right, down, down, up, up, then you're the <laughs> boss or something, you know? And it was different every time you played the game, you got the code from someone. Oh, really? Final Fantasy VII yeah. has that as well, doesn't it? The clock room in the... Um, yeah. The right. Well, there you go, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that was in... But, um... So it, the way that you defeat the bosses is it, every boss, in terms of what you actually need to do, is a one-hit kill. But you are a one-hit kill as well. You've got one arrow that you fire off and then you retract it back to yourself. Um, and they get, they're getting a lot of mileage out of that. You've got a, a run and a roll and that's it. You don't have any jumps or anything like that. It's very, very simple to control. So you've got to time that one shot really hard. And the game is brutally unforgiving from the very get-go. Like, you go up to the first boss, and it's just like, bang, dead. And you're like, whoa, I didn't even... He just started moving, and I didn't even know what to do. Just killed me straight away. So you have to, like, try and figure reload? out the attacks. Yeah. Yes, it's quick yeah. reload. Oh, I would have probably not been playing it if it wasn't. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have, like, a spawn point with, like, a little sort of light on the ground, and it's got dots on it compared to how many bosses there are in your area. So if you kill one boss a little corner of it will be lit up or something. And it's usually only like 20 seconds from the spawn point to where the boss room is. And you walk in and you've got to like, sometimes you have to attack them and maybe there was one where I fought a giant plant and I had to 
get it in, in its sort of petal, then pull the petal off by pulling the arrow back and then shoot it in its weak spot. So that was technically two hits, but it was still really a one-hit kill. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's quite good. And I did one where I had to use the arrow, pulling it back to myself to hit something in its back because it always was facing me. So they got like the, the way that they introduced the challenges is quite good, and each boss is separate, and they're all very well designed, and there's some really really good use of. They've got a very simple pixel design to it, but is beautiful it, color palette and things like is that. Is it frustrating in all in any way? Yes, but the games like that are always going to be frustrating. Um, frustration at a game doesn't necessarily make the game bad. No, no, it's, I, I get there's, you. A, there's an acceptable level of frustration which this game so far as skirted for me i do find that i have to sometimes do it in smaller sessions like i'll do a good session where i'll bash through like three bosses or three enemies essentially and then i'll get to one that's like making me die a lot and i'm like ah oh, do you know what i'm gonna come off this for a bit maybe do it again tomorrow you'll find though when you go back to it the day after you probably do it first time or you know first second or third maybe i yeah. tend to do that with games quite a lot i'll get yeah. stuck and then Want you know when i go back to it i'll have refreshed myself it's the same with coding you know i'll, mm. I'll solve a problem if i go to the toilet <laughs> i'm sure there is there is some sort of uh scientific or psychological thing about the idea of sleeping on it is actually really good for you and i can't remember what it is i'm sure there's actually like yeah, some reason behind still, it still thinks about it doesn't it and starts yeah, it, it, processes it, commits, it yeah commits the pathways to memory so you um you can become more proficient you can continue fighting the boss in your sleep technically there you go. Or solving a problem, not just bosses. Yeah. It's for lots of things in life. It's always bosses. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> always bosses. bosses. Yeah. Bloody bosses. I do like good boss battles, and this game is just a collection of boss battles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like it. Anybody that anybody that likes things like Shadow of the Colossus, um, anything like Dark Souls, anything where you where you're expected to explore and have brutally difficult boss battles that yeah, are really die. unforgiving. That, yeah, well, a game that makes you get good at the game. Not you can't just coast through it by button bashing or armoring up and tanking it. You've got to get good. Can I just I like ask, ask a question? Now we said boss. This might be because we said boss so many times. But why are they call them boss battles? Why? Why are they? Why do we specifically use the word boss for them? I guess it's because it's the, it's it's sort of like the the sort of gaming shorthand that you assume you walk into a room and it's like uh, and it's closed off. Once you're in, once you're in the fight, you can't get out of it, but and no, the music kicks in, and it's a big thing, and it's like, and you think, boss. It's technically no, it's the no, enemies; they're just enemies. Yeah, but but, but it's, uh, when we say boss, we refer to our boss at work. I think it's oh, a right. Japanese thing. I think, I think in a lot, of, like especially in a lot of old Japanese beat 'em ups, you'd fight all the thugs, and you would fight their boss. Their boss, yeah. This is yeah. what I was trying. This is trying to yeah, figure out why. I mean, it's... Like uh, like Streets of Rage, you'd always yeah. fight all the you know. The big boss. It'd be like, you, you, you've, it's kind of like, I guess it's alluding to kind of organised crime and that you would fight the henchmen, then you would the fight dog. the... Because I, I can't see it relating to, like, you wanting to... Because you, you could also say, like, um, in a, from a psychological level, are you wanting to fight your own boss at work? You know, that kind of, But I don't think it is. I don't think it's that. It's, it's a, um, it, oh. To be fair, there are a lot of games that have flat out just called them the boss. Like, you'll have a game and the life meter will say boss and... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, so that's because it's, it's a trope it's now. But I'm saying, where did it come from? What's the etymology of, yeah, of that it's particular been, it's phrase? Been in a l yeah, it's been around in games a long time. I think that's what it's from. I'd have to look it up, but I, I do think it's I, it's a Japanese culture thing. I've looked it up. Could be, yeah. Uh, from its first interactive video game, a feature of Boss was D&D, in 1975. Dungeons and Dragons. Video game for the uh, yeah for the uh, the Plato system. Huh? They called them bosses in that, did they? Not Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Well, it was that, it was a dungeon crawler. I wonder if it comes from board games. I know if, if it's earlier than games itself, it's actually from from something outside of. Well, computer the thing games. is, people we say this, but board games and, and computer games are very closely linked when you think about it at the base oh, they level. Are. And yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people that I mean, uh, Josie, who's going to be on the show today. Um, she she she's a uh, she's really into a card games and a and a. And a board games and not just doing that. She also likes making them, you know, inventing them and creating them. A lot of people do that, and I think. You know, I didn't really think about it until I got into the indie dev world. I didn't think that they, they were that closely related, but they are. Yeah, there you go. So cool. I would I would generally recommend the game on the proviso that you enjoy that kind of game. Know what it is before you get into it, and then you might enjoy it. If you just thought it was a Zelda-type game, it, it, it really, really isn't. It just looks like Zelda, so that's kind of nice. Mm. Top-down view. Very nice it, colour palette, nice designs. Yeah, very pretty, very lots of attention to detail and very polished. It feels like a game that someone 
has spent a lot of time just getting just right. I, do you, I've, yeah. You've played it then, Lou, so what are your, yeah, what's yeah. your opinion on it? I, I'm very similar to Sam, really. I've not played it in a while now, but I've not really played anything in a while. But um, it's nice in that every boss presents a unique challenge. Every mm. boss has a certain way to do it. And I got really stuck on some bosses because I couldn't figure out the way to do it. And then when you do figure it out, it's like, oh, God, the, everything was there from the beginning to tell me what to do. So is nothing obvious? Well, oh, that's the thing. Is, is nothing obvious or is it just a click thing? You know, does it have to click with you? They're really well... Yeah, they, they, you kind of... You'll be doing something and you think you might figure it out. Like, one of the bosses that I fought, um, it was a knight in armour. And basically... With the uh, arrow. Yeah, with the arrow. So yeah. basically, he's got this arrow just like you that he can he can fire at you and send around the, the map and it flies around independent of him. And... When you, when you walk in to trigger this boss, you shoot at his arrow on the floor, and you see this uh, the boss appear, but he's got no armor on. He's just like a skeleton, and then his armor appears, and then he jumps up and knocks you down. And Is this a spoiler, by the way, for anyone who? I'm going to spoil how you beat him. Okay. But th th it took me a long time to get past this guy, but all of the clues are in the beginning of the fight. Mm, the way yeah. that you trigger the fight was in it was how you beat him. All right, you just, you just spoiled it then. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. Thanks, yeah, I, you will be stuck on it for ages. That's and... if I play it because I'm not a particular fan of those kind of games. However, I don't play many of those games, so there could be one that kind of gets me onto that bandwagon, and that this might be the one. You never know. I think. I think the other thing about it is because it is a quick turnaround because it's the Flappy Bird style: die, repeat, die, repeat. The the frustration you normally get from being like whacked by a boss and going back halfway. You know, halfway back. Getting the, the bloody dialogue options yeah. all again. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just mm. literally a case of you get just enough time to walk back and contemplate the last fight that you lost and think about how you might do it. It's really nicely balanced like that. So you don't and start it, back where the boss is. You actually have to trigger the boss again. You, it's there's like boss, yet, little boss arenas. So there's boss areas like like Sam said. There's an area where you have a save point, and there'll be three or four bosses around that save point in various little caverns around it. All right. So you'll go to that point, and you can you can if you if you get bored of that, you can walk to another save point, and that will become your boss area. And you respawn from that area every time you die, and so you can go and try out one of the, the several bosses that are around there. All right. Yeah. And there's usually a theme between the bosses that are in each area. Like there might be like ice bosses or fire bosses or whatever plant bosses in the forest bit things yeah. like that mm -hmm. uh, the, the way the game starts actually there's four that you start at the very beginning that are, that are very different there are, there's a couple of elementals and one weird cube thing that fires lasers so the, the, start, the game starts out with, with no discernible theme then quickly they take on themes for the area that you're in so so yeah how, how do you know how many bosses there are in the game and how long you could no spend playing it I um, have to google I, that I don't know I've heard that there are more than 16 bosses that's pretty good going for an indie game as well that's pretty good and it's a cheap game yeah. Yeah. i think, it was I think there's possibly switch. a lot more than that but um certainly 16 is a number that's run in my head are there any do you think are there any like secret areas or secret bosses that you there definitely don't, are yeah they're they're not, uh, maybe not secret bosses but there are secret areas hmm. yeah, i found cool. one that i thought was a secret area but sometimes it's one of those games where you're not sure if it's a secret area or if it's an area you were supposed to find but maybe not oh, just like an yet. Easter egg. Yeah. Oh, Easter eggs and secrets. Are there any yeah. um, uh, homages in there to like other bosses and other other games? Maybe other other big boss fights. I mean, because well, whenever I think of boss fights, I inst well in that setting, I think of Zelda because because yeah, th yeah. that's the, you know what they do. But uh, it, the Zelda boss fights are all pretty easy, and most of them are just rinse repeat rinse repeat you know and and it's it sounds like the i said the guys put a lot more effort into this well there's no repeating it's, there's there's kind of you'll have to work out um, a pattern for some bosses but the literally one hit if you get it right you kill them in one hit yeah if you don't I get killed it right, a couple then... by sheer luck actually i have to say but i was yeah, just I... like right i'm gonna take a shot here oh it worked done yeah. And I thought, I wouldn't be able to repeat that if I replay it. So there's <laughs> nothing flashing that makes it really obvious that that's the bit you have to hit or anything like No, there like is. That. There's, there's an obvious weak point on most of the bosses, but some bosses are really good at defending that, and some of them, you, you think it's quite devious. It's like, you think 
oh, there's a quick way that I might be able to do this, and you try it, and it actually doesn't work because there's, the boss has got some defense against it. They've been yeah. really well thought out where it's kind of tantalizingly close to being easy, but not. So once you've... So I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get a feeling to how different it is to other boss fights because it sounds like it's put more effort in. This is what I'm saying. He's, so if you if you say, for example, you shoot a... a uh, an arrow is is pointing and he defends it with a shield or whatever is it likely that you could still hit that point by i don't know bouncing it off a wall or, or hitting a boulder or something and the boulder falling on it? i don't know um, um don't, don't tell seen, me how to do any of them i'm just trying to figure out i'm what not the saying anything like are. that yet but the, the, only, the only thing there are certain bosses that sam's mentioned where you basically got to pull the arrow back to get them because they're always facing you so there are things like that and there are also oh, right, things right things in the world like one of the bosses um, the night boss I was telling you about smashes up all of the room that you're in while you're fighting mm. him so you've got pillars to hide behind and he's slowly demolishing the room and you get achievements if you do things like if the whole room is completely demolished and you kill him you get an achievement for that so I know that. That's funny. yeah yeah there's, 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 there's achievements for beating the bosses in certain ways yeah. it's a, it's a, it, what, what I like about it is that they've taken a really simple thing you've literally got but, you know, controls, you go up and down, left and right. You can roll, and you can fire your arrow and pull your arrow back to you. That's all you've got. Mm. They did, what they've done is mined a lot of depth. They've gone, what is the absolute most that we can do with that scenario? Rather than giving you loads of gadgets, they've just gone, keep it simple, make it so you... A bit like Shadow of the Colossus, where you've got to figure out how to climb the Colossus if you need to knock any armour off it, you know, things like that. That's what they've really clearly taken inspiration from. There's even visual cues of the Shadow of the Colossus world and the way what happens to you after the boss dies as well with the whole, like, it seems like you're absorbing their power like it does in Shadow of the Colossus. Lots of stuff like that that it's, they've clearly drawn from that well. Um, and what with the world design of it is a lot of it looks like an ancient place that you've stumbled onto that no one has been there for a long time. It has that sort of crumbling, decaying, ancient, beautiful world feel to it as well hmm. um, so it's very simple but they've done a lot with a very simple idea which I'm, I like it's it's clever It's uh, like it Lou just, says they've clearly put a lot of effort into the design of it it does have that Shadow of the Colossus thing whereby you don't feel like you're do what you're doing is right it's like it is a beautiful serene world and all the bosses you don't walk into a boss room and the boss just starts attacking you you normally got to shoot the boss in fact mm -hmm. I think every boss I've fought you've got to you have to trigger you've, it you've got to provoke the boss for it to start fighting you so it feels yeah. like you're going in, picking a fight, killing it, absorbing it, and then moving on. So it's like you're ruining this world as you go along. And yet you don't discernibly grow from it. You don't get... <clears throat> you're killing a boss doesn't do anything to you. You don't get extra powers or anything. No. It makes it look like you do. It's like a big show. You sort of go... You float in the air, and a big you you start to have light beams. And he's like, oh, then you land, and it's like, right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> you're like, cool, I guess. So yeah, right. it's it's a cool game. Anybody that likes that kind of thing, definitely give it a shot. Hmm. Right. I think it's a game that will be remembered. I think much yeah, of the it's aesthetic been... is, is for the the uniqueness of the game itself. It's been well received by critics, so you know it's mm. obviously been designed quite well. Okay, shall we move <coughs> on then? Is there are there any other games that you guys have uh, played? That's it for me. That's it for me as well. I've also got uh, Titan Souls, but I've only played six minutes of it. <laughs> okay, so you probably didn't need to fight it's a bad a game. Uh, but I thought the first boss got killed three times and then I had to leave the house. I just didn't go back. Then, yeah, I had to leave the house. Yeah. Had, to, had to go out and just, just yeah. destroy just something. Just shame into the just atmosphere. Just down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> had to go shoot an arrow at a squirrel and be like, yeah, take that. I won that fight, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you little fairy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the way of the exploding list. <laughs> Wow, it's getting bigger and bigger every time. You want a, you want a hairdo then and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any ideas? Does I anyone was... in chat have any ideas? I've got I... one in my head. I had one in my head just there, but I think we've asked it before. I was trying to think what I what I responded to, but I was going to ask favourite boss fights, but I know we've, we've asked that We've before. done a whole show on that. Yeah. 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 A whole show on bosses in general. So, but mine, mine's inspired by us talking about GTA Online um, quite a lot earlier favorite online games have we talked oh, about that actually have we done that we haven't i don't think, I don't think we have quick we two haven't. quick two yeah 
Yeah, I was going to say, you knew everybody was going to say this that. Is, this is specifically online, so not local multiplayer, because we talked about them before. So, fa- favourite or worst, whatever you want to talk about. So, games that you've played online that you've enjoyed thoroughly. I think or most hated. of the early first-person shooters are going to stick with me forever. They are games which are like really defining. Stuff like the original Unreal, Quake, Quake 2, Doom Online, although the majority of Doom that I played was actually kind of local multiplayer with a link-up cable, we'll see. See, um, Jedi in, in chats just said that most of the games he plays these days are online. I've went the other way. Most of the games I play these days are single player. And Same even, here. If there is an online option, I turn it off. You know, if there's a, if a lot of the games, you know, like Dark Souls, and I haven't played that, but Dark Souls and um, uh, that other game, Dead Island, that I played recently, instantly turn the online off because I'm like, I don't want some arsehole joining my game, spoiling my single player experience, walking around and potentially insulting me or breaking something in my my game, you know? Mm. However, playing GTA Online, I've quite enjoyed it so far until I have a bad experience, probably. Yeah, I think we've co- kind of covered this before in previous shows whereby we've become quite, like... Not Inshallah. scared, but you, but yeah, we don't want to play these games online. We don't, like you say, we don't want our our personal experience to be sullied by other people when we're playing it. And that's generally the experience that I've had with playing with people who, like random people, is that most of them are assholes. I most have, of them are out there just to spoil your game. I've got no real um, desire to be competitive either in these games. I mean, competitive with you guys. To an extent, I still don't really care if I lose, but I, I, I enjoy being competitive with you because we can bounce off each other and take the piss out of each other, but against people that are just randomers online that somehow get some kind of enjoyment out of ruining your game or, or out of out of winning, you, you know, winning over whatever you're doing, no, I think the, no interest. The, the problem is that the, 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 the idea of griefing people in games has become a game in itself, a metagame on top of games, whereby lots of people will dick people around and post videos on YouTube of it. Mm. And it's like, that's... You know, trolling. That, yeah, trolling has, has become a game in itself. It's become a... a what do we call it? A... a, a uh, metagame? Yeah. No, it would, it would be... With games in, within games, what we talk about like a few in, months back. Oh, uh, uh, like Inception. Yeah. No, what's that gameplay? Emergent gameplay. Emergent gameplay. That's it. Oh, yeah. so emergent gameplay. Word, that, Lou. How do you forget that? <laughs> How do you forget I know, that? I know. Emergent <laughs> gameplay, which is just dicking people around. There are. And other that's people's... been there for ages. I mean, I, I remember with them um, on Ultima Online. Um, you probably remember this as well, Chris. Spleen on Ultima Online. I never played Ultima it, Online. You no, know, you don't have to play. But remember, um, one of the SQS guys posted and like little stories where he basically troll people on Ultima Online, post all these screenshots of it, and tell stories about what he did to people. Hmm. And it was really amusing, but he was also being a complete dick to people. And now everyone's trying to be a dick. Yeah. I would say um, I haven't played that many online games compared to you guys, especially not being a PC gamer, and only really doing online stuff via a PlayStation 3. I haven't signed up for PS Plus, uh, just because I want a tangential thing. PlayStation 3 had free online play on the network. On the PlayStation 4, you've got to pay for your subscription to do it, which is a bit... It seems like a down step for me, given that it used to be free before, but whatever. So I haven't done that yet, so I've not had that many. I remember Red Dead Redemption was pretty good fun online, but it didn't have much longevity to it. The idea of just having that sort of, like, uh, that weird thing where you'd see a player on the other side of the map and you'd have that weird moment where you wouldn't be sure if they were going to be hostile to you or not, which you get in Grand Theft Auto as well. It's just faster because you're in a car or whatever. Mm. That was quite good fun. I like the way that the Souls games do their online uh, components with the messaging that you can do, where you can leave messages for each other. Uh, it's quite sort of passive, but then people can invade your game as well. And it's quite a tense moment when an invader comes in and you're like, is this guy going to be like incredibly awesome or not? And you go, right, let's just get into it, and you have a fight with them. Or what I really like as well is the way you can co-op in those games, and that for me is much more fun. So you leave a little sign on the ground that says, I am willing to join your game and help you out. Someone calls you in, you go in and they'll you go and fight the nearest boss together. And then once you've defeated it, you go back to your own world with some XP and some other bits and stuff that you want. Well, it's called Souls in the game. But it's up to the developers really to give the incentive for that as well. 
because not all developers do that. So, like, for example, on yeah. GTA Online, where you're running around, you, you do, you see someone running up the street, and you're like, they're running towards me. Shit, should I shoot them? Should I shoot them? Or and then you're the arsehole if they aren't going to be hostile towards yeah. you. But yeah. you can't risk it because you're going to die very quickly, lose some money if you've got some on you, lose your armor that you've just paid $300 for or whatever. I know it's only $300, but it's still money in the game. And, you know, it's like... What do you sounds, do? Sounds a bit like description to DayZ, and it? it's like you encounter someone, and you just you. It's like a standoff. It's almost like a post-apocalyptic sort of thing. It's like everyone could be a potential killer. But when you when you shoot someone in GTA, the police do come after you, pretty much straight mm. away. Uh, which I guess they're around. No, Fuck the, the police. The, no, if you shoot someone, they will they will eventually start. Well, they'll start chasing you. I'm pretty sure of that. If you're not in a death match. I'm really interested to hear what Steve's favourite online games are, because I, I, I think Steve's probably someone who's played the least online stuff here. Uh, you tend to play a lot of... Well, I think you well, just tend to play the, a lot of single-player stuff, don't you? Back in the day, you didn't play with us as much, did you? You weren't you weren't as involved in the clan and that, yeah. I'm not no, saying you didn't play I used play to play online, with his. But um, I think you... I don't know. I, I used to enjoy the whole LAN party aspect of it, Mark. For I'm me, with you, yeah. um, there's not a massive amount of... I'm, I'm an introverted person at the best of times, and for me, playing a game with a complete stranger doesn't hold anywhere near as much enjoyment uh, appeal as playing with someone I know. Mm. And I prefer to play with someone I know in the same room. But if that's not possible, then you know, playing online is the next best thing. But I just don't really see see the benefit. It, it, it's not going to improve my experience. So yeah, I'm totally down with that. I never used to be like that, but I am. That, that is totally how I think now. I used to love going on Quake Two servers. I mean, to be fair, it got to a point with the Quake Two servers where we'd go on and everyone knew everyone, you know, yeah. and that that I liked because we all knew each other. If there was an arsehole on there, usually one of us would know an admin or be an admin, and we'd kick him off the server, and it'd be a little club, you know, it's a little click. And uh, yeah. again, good or and bad, and new people that's how came it... in the joint, but they came in and they kind of, you know, the. They joined our game, hmm. like the way that we were playing, hmm. instead of you know everyone just having a free for all and screaming and singing and shouting. Your mum does this down there. I, it's, I, yeah, it's different these days because of the well, voice comms as well. Back then, we didn't really have voice comms either, which is a big difference. Yeah, Roger big... Wilco. Oh God, damn it! Forgot about that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, yeah, but we didn't even have that for a while. We were yeah, it was just was, all was... text typing and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, pressing What's T Roger and Wilco? A W W. It was one of the w. early voice comms. Oh, right, okay. One of the, the first ones. God, I got that totally escaped my memory. That did wow. Yeah, but even when you you could only type to each other, people still try to abuse. Yeah, you just like why? Occasionally, I mean, I didn't see it too much. I'll be honest with you. Back then, I, it was more. It was more of a close knit thing. You know what annoyed me more than anything? I think was people who didn't talk and just played, and especially the ones that were really good, the ones that were really, <laughs> really, really good and kept kicking your ass. And you were like, "Good game," you know. Aliases, Smurfs, whatever you want to call them. A lot of them, yeah. Exist. A lot of them were, yeah. And it's like I, I did actually used to go on servers with a with a different name. Oh, I was not saying. We, we all. I did. actually bumped into Jimmy a couple of times, thrashed him. Right, and then I was in SQS at the same time, and he came on and said, oh, I've just destroyed so and so, so and so, and quite to say, but I was like, You haven't like it, so I was that person. Yeah, I never I, I never lied about it. I'd, 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 yeah, I had a few pseudonyms back then. Yeah, but Jimmy used to lie about everything. Yeah, he did, he did. Right, um, so what? any other games then that we enjoyed online? I probably talked about Quake 2 a bloody lot. Um, online? This is a difficult one for us, isn't the, it? The most impactful games in my life, apart from Quake 2, have been single-player or co-op, like local. Mm. Or Yeah, I was going to say, or local multiplayer. There's, I can think of a lot of local multiplayer games that I uh, really but cherish. We've done that. So yeah. Shush. Yeah, yeah but, but online, it's like... Uh, I'm going guess... to say I quite enjoyed, for a period, I quite enjoyed playing Call of Duty. I enjoyed it a little bit as well, actually. Call of Duty 4 online was and quite I, good fun. And you know why I enjoyed it? I did play it online with randomers for a while as well, but I'd mainly played it with a group of uh, friends from, from the local town who got together and had a, you know, we all grouped up, got on voice cams, created a party together and got on three on the 360 and just hammered everyone. I can't believe I used to play an FPS on the 360 and enjoy it. I can't believe that. Potatoes said uh, Sid <gasps> 
MMOs, yeah. Sorry, well, go on. I want as MMOs, I want to say like EverQuest because I really enjoyed not so much the game but the world in that. I, I played World, world of Warcraft games. and thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I don't think as games they're, they're, they're that good, but as experiences they're excellent. But it's it's almost like, I was just thinking there, of, of all the online games that I really enjoyed, there's only one that sticks to mind. It's one that I played for the vast majority of the time when I was willing to play with people online, and that's Quake 2. I kind of feel like there's usually only one. There, there are some people who've played like a, a string of popular games online, mm. but for me, there's only ever been one that's been like a main one. Yeah, and that was that was same with me as well. But we we developed a community and we developed a, a a friendship around that as well. Not just us two, but a whole clan of friends that we used to meet and you know and, and play games with in the same room. So we knew the people that we were playing with mostly. But there was also the element of going on a random server and randomly playing a random person. <clears throat> I used to play Carmageddon online a bit. Yeah, that was fun. Never, I'd, I've never played that game. I've seen it being played. That so really must have been memorable. I've really just remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> but for a time, it was fun. That, I could, I uh, that was, I was on a modem, and I couldn't play anything. But to, to be honest, I know we're not talking about, it, but it's always been local multiplayer. But when I think uh, like multiplayer games, I think straight away, even back in the old days, back like playing Twisted Metal or just playing like Worms, Metal. something like that. Even like, me, me and Sam Tekken, had so Tekken, much fun Tekken, playing. Tekken. Yeah. Well, I had yeah, so much fun playing Worms. I know I was, I, I basically kicked the shit out of you every time we played. Well, most you did of the time. pretty much beat me, but I always enjoyed playing. It that was game. always it's fun. A fun yeah. game. It's the kind of game where, like, yeah, if you lose, so what? It's Worms. It's not that big a deal. Did anyone bother? Few guys I used to work with used to play. Yeah, I was really Zuka good. Was right for certain yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, I mean, a few guys I used to work with used to play um, Gears of War online. On a, oh, like, that was, just yeah. once a week on a Friday night. Yes, that was that and was that again four v four thing. Yeah. With that the was quite guys, fun, but again, it yes. was playing with people that I knew. Mm. Yeah, my my, my three sixty mates, the guys I play COD with, I played Gears of War with them as well, and I did thoroughly enjoy that. That was a lot of fun. Um, but I also just, liked playing randomers again with that. I didn't mind so much. Every now and again, I'd be like, right, I want to go and get a few levels. I want to nip on a server, have a bit of a game. Levels in Gear, Gears of War. Yeah, you could you could get experience and levels and right. uh, I can't even remember what for now but there was I don't think it done anything I think it did didn't it unlock stuff did you unlock weapons and stuff armors. no the weapons you all have isn't it enough having a reward just to get better at the game just the the, yeah, yeah. the the constant learning curve the years of effort that I put into Quake 2 to become slightly above average yeah yeah <laughs> Halo anyone from Halo I I played Halo. We were playing uh, Halo 2 with uh, with a friend of mine and Chris's Alex, who you guys I think could have met maybe once. Um, he had it, and I went. I remember staying at his uh, flat when he was at university and playing that over quite a few days. And he had a little clan that he let me join in their matches and stuff. So that was cool because he was playing with people that he knew who were cool and friendly. And then we'd go and play with other randomers as a team. And they would be dickheads, and it'd be funny because we were like as a unit against when, them. I remember when that was happening. He invited me along to that. I was, I was like, "Been there, done that, worn the t-shirt, don't give a fuck, <laughs> not anymore, not playing on the plus Halo shit." As so, so <laughs> we uh, it's good fun. It's good fun. <laughs> we played UT two thousand and three online for a bit. Uh, we did, didn't we? but I didn't play. It, I didn't play it at random as that. Two thousand four. Sorry, but well, we just. We didn't even actually play the league, did we? We just played the admins for a bit and then decided not to continue once we got accepted. Uh, that was Tribes 2, wasn't it? Yeah. Tribes 2, we, we, oh, we that smashed was UT the admin. as well. Maybe. But um, certainly with Tribes 2, we smashed did that. the admin. You know what? Tribes I, 2, yeah. I used to play Tribes 1 online loads. Tribes 2, yeah, we didn't smash the admins. We got absolutely destroyed by, by in Tribes 2. Tribes 1, we that played was UT a little bit. That we smashed the admins, then, wasn't it? Oh, maybe it was. We then. did try. Oh, yes. Tribes yes, we did. The, we we learned the little technique of getting people to stand on the wings of the uh, manta, yeah, so we could transport people up, across yeah. the map really quickly. And you get three people to a manta instead of just one, because we are awesome. Let's, we really um, had to figure out that game, didn't we? We, I, I we had used to good love tactics it. for that. I really wanted to play them more. I really wanted to play any of the tribes games more, but nobody was that into it. Not as much, anyway. Right, let's move on. Gaming news. 
Okay. So, yeah. um, first of all, I just wanted to briefly mention Assassin's Creed Syndicate because as I was been looking through all of the uh, gaming news websites, it's fucking everywhere. It is that's <laughs> all they're talking about. That Arkham Knight and um, another Witcher game. Witcher Three. Arkham Witcher Shite. Three. Yeah. <laughs> because just because he asked for high specs, he is now convinced himself that it's a zero out of ten game, <laughs> and is that and not only that, but is actually evil and everything wrong with the games industry. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Two games that are coming out more or less the same time, right? The Witcher Three and Arkham Knight. Witcher Three is still twenty five gig. It, yeah, right at a download size. But have you seen what specs are available? Have, have you seen the recommended specs? No. It's below what you class as like you know a decent PC, yeah? and it looks better than Arkham Knight. It looks a hell of a lot better. All right, because it's got green in it. Here's the dirty, smelly programmers. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your Arkham Knight looks better than fucking everything and anything ever. It better do, anyway, if yeah, it doesn't. Well, I'm... Got your eyes <laughs> it's it's uh, like one of those anyway. people who can invisible when you don't look at them. Well, speak, speaking of Arkham Knight, I actually ha I don't know if I said this last time, I've got a free key with my uh, my new laptop um, purchase. Um, oh, did, no, that was it. Last week I actually said that I, w I sent Scan an email asking them about it. And um, I sent them an email saying, uh, I've, I bought this, like... To, I didn't actually say exactly this, but I said, am I eligible for the new Gotham, uh, it's not Gotham, Dark Knight download and the Witcher 3 key? Because I already had the Witcher 3 key from my GTX 980 purchase, but I got a Witcher 3 key with that and Arkham Knight. They sent them both to me, so I'm well chuffed. So I've installed Arkham Knight from GOG, no, on Steam, and I've sent, um, I sent Steam my, my other Witcher 3 key, so he's now got Witcher Cheers, 3 man. for free. 40 odd quid worth of game. Currently like, downloading. Can't sniff at that, no, can you? Currently downloading right now. Yeah, it's like a, it, it's like a pound a gig. It's like a 45 gig download. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's quite a big one. Um, you, uh, th that's another thing that I wanted to talk about briefly the new GOG Galaxy downloader. Have you, are you, have you installed that, Steve? Um, not at the minute. I've, I'm just downloading the bin files because I wouldn't. Because well, it's only on beta at the minute, so I thought. Can't well, it's, really not, be asked. it's not even available yet. You it can, is. It's, you can pre-order it. You can pre-download it, but you can't play it yet. What Galaxy? No, Witcher Three. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Galaxy. Yeah. Oh my God. Right, I'm, Gog. I'm pre-loading Witcher. <laughs> yes, GOG have got a new essential, essentially a client out, so you can now download games within GOG, like a Steam type thing. However, it has no resume function. So I started downloading it yesterday and I had to pause my uh, download for something. I was doing some work or whatever. Paused it. I was at about 15 gig out of the 25 gig I had to download. Paused it and it just cancelled the download. And I'm like, No way. Oh, God. No way. Oh, God damn it. We are in 2015. <laughs> It's yeah, a beta though, terrible. so you know I'm not expecting it to be perfect. But it, you it's... just download the game though; it comes in four gigabyte chunks, so that's quite handy. Right. Um, yeah. So the actual client looks sort of like Origin. It looks shit. It is a bit shit, but it, it'll get better, you know. And to be fair, it's a good uh, Gog. Gog have got a lot of stuff on there, and um, I would prefer to have a client to do all of my. GOG games, you know, Gogging. so I can go, right, I want to I wanna play yeah, some I would old prefer games. Client, I would prefer Steam. <laughs> well, yeah, I was kind of do, you know, do you not remember, maybe about 10 years ago, where we were like, Steam, it's evil! I evil! never hit. I always thought Steam was a good idea. No, you didn't. I, you hated it. I remember you whinging about it at a black BLR once, because, oh, you have to be online to play the game. That's rubbish. It's rubbish. And we didn't have an internet connection. <laughs> no, it was, that was not me. It was you. You whinge about it everything, was. though. I'll, I'll, I'll get the well, recording out because I record me because I went to everything. I record everything so that you I ever say. So I've got it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I take constant pictures of your life to, to go in line with the audio. Right, um, That'd be really shit photographic memory, wouldn't it? So I, I well, I was just kind of. It's gone. I was, I was just kind of thinking that what I do is I would download uh, the game and then not activate it through Steam, but you can register products with Steam, kind of non-Steam products. So Steam would then still be able to control it mm. instead of using Galaxy. I would prefer it in Steam, but they're not going to do that. That's the thing. They need, they're going to start trying to compete with it for retro games, essentially, because that's their market, isn't it's it, just, Gog? Yeah, yeah. Good old games. But 
I like the yeah. fact that they package things up and they give you DOS box with it and they give you all the settings that should work with most PCs. You can tweak it a bit, but it generally works. I quite like that with GOG. The, the, the uh, I mean, one thing as well with the uh, with GOG is it comes with game goodies. I don't know whether you've seen any of these. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so, like The Witcher comes with. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, loads of like Wallpapers. extras. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paper toys, so these are things that you print out and then cut up and make little Deals avatar with thingies with uh, soundtracks, um, HD videos, avatars, comics. Mm. But I said that they're, they're getting in. You know, they're only fairly new in the market, though, and I think they're getting in. They're not. They're never going to compete with Steam, unfortunately. They, I think they know that as well. But they do have a niche when it comes to gamers that want to play older games that are hard to run on modern PCs. Basically, The Witcher Three. Just, I just, I'm only, I've only downloaded it from them because I got it. I got a free key. That's all it is. Otherwise, I'd have got it on Steam. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, The Witcher Three is available on Steam, GOG, and Xbox as well now uh, as a pre pre download or pre whatever you call it pre preload. That's it, preload. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, pre com. Yeah, and also it's been getting ten out of ten reviews as well. The Witcher. It's exceeded one million pre-orders as well. You know what my opinion is on pre-orders, but... It's been very hyped, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's getting 10 out of 10s. You don't see that that often, really. You do if every you time a big franchise game though. comes out. No, you don't. Name the last 10 out of 10. I don't, I don't, I don't read Theft any reviews. Five. Say again. Grand Theft Auto 5. Did that get 10 out of 10? Yeah, that. it did yeah. get a lot of 10s, yeah. Okay, well, I didn't know that. But um, previous to that, then... No, quite a lot of. I mean, franchi- there's certain franchise games that always seem to score well. Like Call of Duty always scores well, doesn't it? I think doesn't that's what it's talking about. Ten out of ten, though. No, it, it doesn't. It hasn't got ten out of ten for ages. Not not unanimously um, across the board. No, it hasn't. And uh, again, Assassin's Creed Two was the last game on that series to really get across the board great reviews. They've all been a bit up and down since then. So they're not like there aren't games that Garrett even like Zelda: Last Sky- Skyward Sword got mixed reviews, didn't it as well? Yeah, it did yeah. Oh, that got some terrible reviews. That some people like really hate it. I mean, yeah, some people still really hate it now. There's yeah. not, there's not many ten out of tens that I can think of. I can think Portal Two was a ten out of ten, generally across the board. That was a very well received game. Red Dead Redemption, yes. I think that was a very well received, received game. The Last of Us was really well received as well, critically. That got was pretty it, much right? nines and tens every review. Um, so yeah, they don't. I mean, that actually happened that often. I don't think they don't. The so I think get a, get a perfect score. Because if they did, the, yeah. I mean, all the critics would get criticised at the end of the day. You know. Um, yeah. Right. How very meta. Yes. So we talked about God Galaxy. Um, the Void VR experience. The Void. Now, Steve- so this to me, yeah. this to me looks like basically a laser quest with an Oculus Rift on your head. Yep. I was going to yeah. say laser Which quest is the holodeck. Like. I, I, I like the, this is this is the total immersion that I was talking about. It's a four D experience apparently. So there'll oh, be no, smells and not. no, no, no. This, no, I'm mean? saying that this what is that the mean? you get to travel through time. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> time and space become one. It. <laughs> Isn't the fourth dimension? It's still a time. Physic- it's fourth not, is it? Is time. No, it's yes, not. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is length, depth, breath, and time. I thought those the fourth... four dimensions you can tell the position of anything in space. In the fourth so, dimension completely incorrectly. 4D is not being squared with water. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> iron, iron filings. <laughs> Contrary to marketing materials. Yeah. Right. I'm going to send you. A, uh, I'm going to put a link in chat. It's 4D still a, it's link. Still a really, Nothing to do with time really that, cool. but apparently that's a 4D cube. That's a hypercube. Right. So is is that is that well, not what is, 4D is? I can you paste the same link into uh, Skype, Chris? I can say. No. Nope. Yeah, there, are, there, are there are apparently there are apparently in mathematics there are there are objects that transfer that have more than three dimensions in terms of that space they take up they can only be theorized and written down in terms of numbers but they can never be drawn because you can't show it like you can't see it so yeah there's that dimension but that's blatantly not what this is advertising itself as is it it's basically saying because there's like physical feedback and a bit of smoke and steam 
then it's for, that's the fourth dimension when it really isn't. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just semantics. I'm just saying that that's what they're advertising it as. We know what 4D a 4D cinema experience is. That's what they call yeah, it's it as. It's marketing, it's marketing yeah. bollocks. Yes, of course it is. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that is what they're off. I'm not saying that that is four dimensions. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, I just hate the, 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 the phrase 4D. I hate, I hate you, it. but I don't go on about it. You do a bit. You do, <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> Actually, I do, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, so general general ideas then about this this thing, general consensus, the fact that it's not available in the UK, I don't think, at the moment. I think if you, get, if you get a few mates and go as like make a day out of it, which you'd have to, because I could have guaranteed that one, you'd have to travel to get there because it's going to be in major cities, so we don't know what that means really. And two, it's yeah. obviously going to be quite expensive. So you'd have to make a big do of it and be like, we're going to go and do this today as a special event. Stag if you do that with a few mates, yeah. It could be. I reckon it could be fucking awesome. To be honest, if they if it's done right, it could be really, really good. As long as the computer doesn't crash while you're running down a hallway and it That's freezes and he's smacking it all. Yes. Wall. <laughs> this, this has kind of got the same drawbacks as Laser Quest has, which is you're running around in the dark and you're going to end up injuring yourself. Yeah, I played yeah. a lot of Laser Quest and I hurt myself a few times playing that. Not that seriously, but you know, falling mm. over and bumping into things. It won't. It won't take long for this one. You've got to build a, a, a world which is going to be the same all the time, but with a different skin on it. And two, you, you know, you can't. You run around and you blindfolded, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Is the uh, the thing about it is they have to build a bespoke building or collection of buildings for this to work in, and then they've got to create a three D environment representing that. They've got to put the four D equipment in there to spray you with water or put some steam or make a hissing noise behind you. So uh, essentially, once it's opened, it's going to be the same level over and over again, or a different level with different textures, but the same which layout. Isn't, which isn't a massive problem. Not necessarily, that the edge of break two for three Gosh, years solid. No, because no, because if you get, if, it depends on the si the space that they've got. If you go into a place that's the size of a warehouse, and they go right, this is quadrant one. This is the sci-fi game, and you go into the next quadrant, which is completely different. And you go, this is the riding on not riding That's on water. This, this is the uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the original like Brian's place. house. <laughs> <laughs> no, they could they could have different areas. So that you go and do one bit. They clearly showed that it was a flight simulator bit, which is clearly separate from everything else. So there could oh, be that's just a second box though. Yeah, I know, but what we're saying is they could have different sections. It doesn't just because they've got one yeah. area that they showed as a sci-fi bit. But the plane mean has to fly around somehow, Steve. Yeah, right. the plane that's, has to that's fly the, around. That's, that's the area of the point where you throw up a lot. That's where it's going to smell of vomit. Yeah. Yeah, because they're going, running around with the vestibular system working, and they're going to stand in one place and fly around in a spaceship or whatever, and it's going to throw. up. From the videos that I've watched, basically, it seems to me like there's, there's going to be a warehouse which has got a load of plasterboard corridors that are in there, right? Which so you can then walk up to a wall and lean up to it. And of people like that. <laughs> yeah, run through them. So, once you've, once you've figured out the layout I mean, this, I'd rather run around these, it without the the of rooms, yeah. it's going to be the same, isn't it? Uh, so well, whether it's a zombie game, or an aliens uh, game, or a terrorist game, it's always going to be all right. There's a room down the bottom of this corridor. Not necessarily. Yeah. They, I know could, there's some they stairs could have different me. configurations. They could have but boards they that they move around in different <laughs> areas and places. And it's still, it's still health have the safety won't allow them. It, it'd have to be fixed in place. Yeah, I think I think the problem is that it's going to have the same kind of longevity as as Laser Quest. Laser Quest kind of popped yeah. up. Everyone loved it, and then it disappeared because it it didn't change. It didn't evolve. And you're watching. Problem, really. You're watching the the video game critics. The video the, game gets the grumpy. Yeah, the grumpy gets the video game cynics. Where the grumpy like, That's gamers. Shit. <laughs> we got this no, new I, idea. I, shit. I, I think it <laughs> will be awesome. Which fucking quick too. <laughs> but it's something that you'd, uh, prob you'd probably only do once or twice. Yeah, it's a gimmick. Uh, once, yeah, but you might. Yeah. You might only. That's what I'm saying. You'd probably only do it on certain occasions. And let's say you did it like one year for a mate's birthday or whatever, and you went back another year and it was totally different. Like, yeah. For them, it'd be like they'd have to probably charge through the arse and make it really expensive to, to sort of justify their running costs and yeah, stuff as well. Every year they'd have to go through serious renovations and then serious reprogram and create new worlds in the virtual environment, new textures, new enemies, new sounds, new 4D equipment. It's just not viable. <laughs> business are going to build once and keep it the same for 10 years. Get rid of all the staff, rehire everybody. Yeah. We can reinvent money. Rebuild the building. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> right, so we don't like it. Let's move on. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins' video is 10 years old. Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> See, I, I have seen that video before, but I've, I forgot all about it. And I, I, I knew the Leroy Jenkins mem, but I, I didn't, I forgot what it was all about ten until I watched it old. again. Ten years old. Ten years. It's crazy that it's ten years old. And World of Warcraft still looks the same. <laughs> sort of. It does. It's a bit better. No, it doesn't. It's got more green in it, maybe. More <laughs> luminous green and more emiss emissive materials, maybe. Um, that was just a quick one. Ratchet and Clank movie has some big names in the cast, is <laughs> Sam's Hope that it's... F what? The first, first great, great video, video game, game movie. movie. Oh. Because, and Who's I think I've brought this up before, when it, um, I'd have to go have a look at the article because I've forgotten now. Uh, Paul Giamatti was in there. Um, so I think Rosario... Uh, yeah, Rosario Dawson. Yeah, but Stallone... So Vester Stallone was in answer, not, remember? Got, yeah, and he was really good in it. He's actually <laughs> done some good... He's quite good at voiceover. They're obviously not. They've got the main the main voice actors from the game are doing Ratchet and Clank in the main characters, which I think is really cool that they've not recast it because the <laughs> game's cutscenes already look like a CGI movie anyway. They're already that good, so they just need to make a whole film out of that that's funny and enjoyable. And I'm properly down for it. And the fact that I'm they've surprised. got they've, they've managed to get some pretty big name actors in there, or well, maybe not big name because I know Paul Giamatti's not like a huge star, but he's a critically acclaimed, well versed character actor. They've got some pretty cool. I think uh, was it John Goodman in there as well, possibly. Yeah, yeah. John Goodman. He's a great. He's done some great voiceover stuff. You know, Sully from Monsters Inc. So they've got some good people in there. I think it could be really cool. Like it could be crap, um, but it could be awesome. They've got uh, the guy who's directing it directed the 2007 CGI Ninja Turtles movie, which might not have been a great movie, but it was very well animated and, and sort of put together in the visual point of view and if they've got the insomniacs writers on board doing their thing it could be really good it could be genuinely a good movie I hope. i'm surprised that ratchet and clank is a big enough franchise to warrant a movie because like ratchet i've heard about huge, it but i've never huge, played that yeah, it's, yeah, big, it's big it's, big it's as huge as it is it's a console platform you wouldn't have played it because you don't play consoles yeah i know but everyone's I think got I've... a playstation has played at least played I one of them i haven't i've not played i've not played, played a played one of you were always playing it. I never got the chance. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like, no, it's mine! I just didn't realise it's as big, as big as it clearly is. Because compared to stuff like, obviously, Halo and, and Assassin's Creed and stuff like that, it doesn't seem anywhere near on their level yet. It's getting a movie made of it, and Halo famously fell through. Yeah, but isn't it yeah. um, e exclusive to Sony? Maybe that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's only you a bit Sony on... own a production yeah, company. Yeah, Sony. Oh well, yeah, they do. I don't know the politics behind it. I don't even know the uh, humour behind it, or the or the, the story, or anything really. I don't really. Know I, much about I'm it. I'm not an expert, but I don't. I'm not sure if producing a, a fully CGI animated film uh, with where you don't have to have any live actors is probably cheaper than making a Halo movie. I'm mm. just going to go out on a limb and say that. How many how many CGI animated movies do you just know, get churned out? I, say, I know, know it take a while to make, but they churn them out. You know how many real uh, live action movies these days of just CGI full set? Uh, the, the, <laughs> very, very rarely do you get full <laughs> sets and scenes these days. You get the up close detail. Uh, yeah. Lou, they have made yeah. a Halo movie. They Forward have, yes. Dawn. Yeah, Forward Into Dawn, which is sort of. And also there's Neil Blumkamp's. Um, Halo yeah. shorts as well, which are brilliant, and they're done on a shoestring they budget. Are really good. Red versus blue, all the way, all the way. Oh fuck off! <laughs> yeah, but that became awful though, didn't it? It well, is utterly terrible fans, now. But it started out as a really quirky comedy show, and then became like, "Ugh, didn't know you guys were going to save us in the end." Explosions and backflips, like what the fuck? Yeah, totally it, it, I don't different. even know what season it went. Really, really rubbish. Twenty-five. It, uh, <laughs> just yeah. think that 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 transformed into what is now Yogg's cast and all that shit. Which I'm sure we're coming on to. What? Minecraft. It was not. It didn't get. It was nothing to do with Yogscast. No, it wasn't. But it, that, that, it was the, the, them that started that whole thing. You know, I've never watched a Yogscast video. Been. I've never ever seen a Yogscast video, so I don't know I what mean. it's about, really. Well, I know it's, it's Minecraft. Mi for that's Minecraft it. Minecraft cinema, isn't it? Um. It's anyway, what? so yeah. But why don't we talk about that then? Whatever this is. Oh yeah, this is that Minecraft is the is the top video for let's players on youtube there was a list of the top 10 uh, none of which would really be surprising to anybody 
No, no, I haven't even known this for ages. It's been the top. Minecraft Annoyingly, is... nowhere in that top ten is Supreme Commander, which is the my favourite game to watch. I watch every Guile cast. I know I keep going on about the guy, but it is such an entertaining thing to watch. I watched one the other day, and it was a brilliant game. More people need to watch that. That I could watch that as a sport on TV. What kind of game is it? Sorry, it's a, so, it's an RTS. RTS game. Right. Okay. It's like a but Command it, and Conquer type, but it's a lot more complicated and, and actually quite skillful to play. I can't play it. I'm yeah. totally fucking it terrible at it. Brains. But it's the, really, it's really, it, like, really good to watch, especially if you get a bit of an understanding about the game. It's all about micromanagement, um, and you, 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 I can't do that with RTS games. I'm a select all, send all kind of guy, and if I, if it's Command and Conquer, yeah, I can deal with it. But no, nothing. Yeah, this this is huge scale. Oh god. Sorry. <gasps> That'd be someone PPIing me. Be oh, a missus. <clears throat> right. Division has been. PPI. <laughs> the division is being delayed until early 2016. Do we care anymore? Are we giving up with the division? What oh, bloody hell? <laughs> Put it under a um, pillow. Sorry. I think the division is one of those games that just yeah, it just doesn't look like it's actually that interesting it seems to be getting a little bit on the ubisoft hype train when they go we are going to make the future of, of uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it's just another game that's just a game do you know what i mean they sort of do that they really with, really with over hype towers their own you have shit to, you have to climb and, and activate and uh parkour in it probably and when you get the command tower that opens up the uh the the map so you can see where the icons are obviously be somewhat like that yeah. I bet if, if they honestly if they have that mechanic in that game that's it, Mike. Um, That's it, Ubisoft. I've done. I've done already. I'm already. I'm already done with my Ubisoft with my minor soft. Minor anyway, yeah, Does anybody in chat soft. care about the division anymore? Have we? Have we? Is it? Is it been too long? Has it been delayed too do, much? Do you know, I, I kind of feel like this game is going to be a bit like Watch Dogs, and it looks beautiful, and all of the videos are going to be beautiful. But then when you play it, it's going to be a big disappointment. Which is a shame because it looks really good. I mean, I'm, I can't. I'm not going to say that until it's. It, but it's just Ubisoft. I just know that their platform is. This works. We're going to keep banging it out with a new IP. You know, this game mechanic it, works. From what I've seen in the division, there's not that much more going on than a squad-based cover shooter. There's not that much there. They've, they've really shown anything that different. The fact that you can talk to each other and sort of be a bit tactical, but there's not much more in the actual nuts and bolts mechanics that they've shown. As far as I'm I aware, the world if anyone wants to correct really me. The world looks really the, interesting. The, the, the interaction the level, the level with the way that, Yeah, and the way that the way that the levels go quite dynamic and that you can change things in the world and the way that you have to capture places as well as like you can hole up in a shack up in a place and capice it and make it yours and fortify it. I do like that idea of it. Although See, in practice always... whether that is a stable gameplay experience is All of these things sound thing. awesome. I've always I always wanted a game like Planet Side. You know, I always wanted a game where you mm. could take over bases and you could then hold up in that base if you wanted to and move on to another place and that kind of... The mechanic of Planet Side worked really well, but in practice, you know, sort of, uh, the short-term mechanic rather, but the long-term mechanic of it was very boring and drawn out. Mm. And that kind of mechanic that you just described in, in Division it's, doesn't sound it like it has like much longevity. It's uh, yeah. It sounds like it should be great, but it, it also it's inherently unstable. It depends entirely on on the players, they playing the game properly. And if the players don't play the game properly, then the game doesn't work. Do you think Ubisoft have got much left in them? As in, do you think they're going to last much longer? Do you think they're, they're, well, they're, they're still a powerhouse? Well, yeah, they've, they've, they've done they've varied sold. games though. But you have to remember that there are people that are up and excited for every new Assassin's Creed game and buy it. Far Cry Four was really successful. Yeah. That they're, they're, they're doing well just because there's a uh, just because they're not our favourites amongst us four. There's a lot of people out there that are still into it and will buy the the instalments of whatever. And they do yeah, make they've made a couple of other games as well. Like no, the Rayman series is doing quite well. The, the, the sort of two D platformer that's made quite a bit of a name for itself in that market as well. And that's Ubisoft published as well, I think. And Tomb Raider was Ubisoft right now. Am I right? Is that are uh, they own, is you made um, run by you, Ubisoft now? I thought it was yeah. EA. I think no, it's I think Ubisoft. It's Ubisoft. Mm, and I think right. again that game that game did did really well, was critically quite well received. 
as well. So I, I don't think they're going anywhere. I just think that they're not my favourites, but I would never deny that they are capable of putting out a good game. Um, oh, they just still make a buttload of money. They do, yeah. And I think there's a kind of a lottery going on. There's now, I mean, like the Far Cry Four sold really well because Far Cry Three was such a, a like a, a massively outstanding and un like un, unforeseen hit. Like Benchmark. Far Cry Two, right. yeah. yeah, Far Cry One was obviously the big one. Like it got everyone into the idea. Far Cry Two was a bit crap, and then Far Cry Three came along and was like really well done. And then yeah. Far Cry Four was yeah. just a clone with a different map and not as good and had yeah. eagles. Uh, Which was shit. Tomb Raider was a very annoying villain. Squeenix. Squeenix. Well, Ubisoft publish uh, Square Enix games now, don't they? Does so Ubisoft they've got, collab with does them? That mean, does that mean they've got Final Fantasy under their wing now as well? Um, I think so. probably put, they, I think the, Ubisoft have been publishing Final Fantasy in the uh, West for a while. So I there think, you go. I that, think you're talking out your ass, though. I think so. I think you're talking out your ass. I don't think Final Fantasy have got anything to do with. I don't think Square Enix have got anything to do with Ubisoft. I don't think. Yeah. I think. I think they are. They are Square Enix. They are the publisher. With Square I thought they were underneath their own them. thing as well. Yeah. The Final Fantasy is not big enough to be the thing. But then again, every time I look at a product in the supermarket, it's owned by Unilever. So you know, <laughs> it could. They could be. Square Enix have helped deliver Ubisoft games to Japan. Uh, that's ah, the, like, right. Okay. So they've helped as a distributor sort of thing. I guess yeah, there must yes. be, yeah, it must be in collaboration because um, the Final <coughs> Fantasy, um, Final Fantasy VII came out on UPlay first of all, which was U Ubisoft's platform. Yeah, that's probably because Final Fantasy VII deals, yeah. released. Yeah, I think they did so publish the PC version as well. Okay. So I think yeah, there is something going on between the two of them. Something sinister and slightly sexy. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. I think we're done. Yeah. Oh, there was one uh, more little thing. I just because when I was looking through news articles and stuff, there was something about Final Fantasy fifteen, blah blah blah. I'm like, what's there has there been a Final Fantasy fourteen? They just skipped over it. Yeah, there's no point was it online, wasn't it? It was a multiplayer version. Is that is that what it was? Because I remember I so, thirteen yeah. having a huge like advertising campaign and it was like blah Final Fantasy thirteen's blah 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 and fourteen just didn't you know, know, wasn't a big thing. Fifteen is the first one that's appealed to me for quite some time. And Any particular not... reason? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I've read quite a few reviews and quite a few looked at quite a few screenshots, and it just I don't know. There's something about the world feels it feels more um, modern. If you know what I mean, it feels more like not modern. Um, Contemporary. Yeah, it feels more realistic. I suppose to me, I don't know. It feels like it it works a bit better. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I do. There's something about what I've read and what I've seen that, that appeals to me a bit more. But I haven't read too much about it yet. I haven't really delved into it. I may delve into it a bit more and see if I fancy it. But I imagine The Witcher Three is going to take up a lot of my life after when that comes out. I think I'm going to get that. I want to have a bit more of a bash at Titan Souls. But when's The Witcher Three released? What's the release date on it? It's not long now. It's six days. Oh, is it? Oh, it's, cool. oh, it's even shorter than I thought. Then I think uh, yeah, given five or six the six days. Given that it, it kind of looked interesting to me anyway, and that it has got, if the fact that it's got good enough reviews means it's got enough for me to give it a go. If I really don't like it, I don't like it, but it looks like I will, so I think I'm going to get that as well. So we could all talk about that probably in a couple of shows' time if we've all had a good go at it. And it's it's unlikely. Are you interested? Is. Are you interested in it, Lou? No. Right. It's no. unlikely these days that different platforms will have different versions of the game as well, like they used to. I mean, a few years back, we used to get. Sometimes we get a cut down version on the PC if it was released on console first, or consoles would be majorly cut down if it wasn't just graphical fidelity. That sometimes they take features out of the game. These days, it just doesn't seem to be the case, does it? So you will Not be playing the same that, game uh, as us, really. Back in the day, when you had like the SNES versions and Mega Drive versions of games, would often be completely different mechanically. They'd be done by, as well yeah, they'd be done by different developers yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Um, or you get so, weird ports where you you know you get to two guys working in the bedroom for a few months to do a port to a different machine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's just the way it worked. Whereas now it's a much more tightly organised business. Mm. Out of interest, Final Fantasy fourteen was the online one. It was Final Fantasy Online, basically a realm okay. reborn. Okay, fair enough. I, mean, I don't really follow the series. I just thought it might have not been a big deal or something. I don't know, really. Anyway. Right. 
Any other business? Um, no. Well then, I shall say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much for everybody in chat. Thank you for your participation. Uh, yet again, if you have not seen us before and you're interested in anything that we do, we have a website, www.resonancearcade.com. We're on YouTube, forward slash Resonance Arcade, Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade, and Facebook. You know, it, it's the same thing for everything. Uh, Google Plus and everything else that no one uses. Um, so, thank you very much, and we shall see you next week. See you Bye. later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.